All right, so in this video, we'll start to move on to uh, create material, different type of material for uh, the model. And we'll talk about different type of uh, texture maps as well. So as we move on to the texture, first the thing we'll uh, do is we'll create something called a project window, uh, which is the hierarchy folder of the project. Um, otherwise, you know, if we don't create that, um, whenever you move your project to a different location, uh, it's very hard for your model and material to trace back where the texture map is. Okay, so we'll go to File, Tall Menu File, and go to Project Window. Uh, and as you can see here, it will create all these uh, subfolders. Uh, um, and for your MB file or MA file, which is the scene file, it will be stored in the scenes folder. And for the texture image, it will be stored in the source image folder. Okay, and for rendered image, it will be rendered to your image folder. So that's the hierarchy. All right, so here we'll click on new. So we'll create a new um, um, uh, fo uh, project folder. And uh, here we'll just, you know, choose a location where you would like to place. So here I already decided a location where I would like to place. And you can click on this folder to change the location. And for the current project, so give it a name. So for example, here, I'll just see Burial. Okay, that's the name of my project. And then I'll click on Accept. And as long as you click, and as you can see, it'll create a folder, a Burial folder. And inside of the folder, it has all these uh, subfolders. Right now, it doesn't have anything in it because you know we just started with this project. All right, and then, we have to save this uh, scene I just uh, started and go to file and uh, save scene as. I always use the shortcut, which is uh, command shift S. Okay, so as you can see, by default, it will go to right the barrier folder and the scenes folder. So that's the beauty of project window. And here I'll see barrier uh, step one. So step one is for modeling um, and, uh, and UV, right? So that is the first step. And then since we are moving on to second step, so I always do this um, to have different progress files. So second step will be um, texture, texturing, okay? So now we are on the second step file. Um, okay, so in the last video, as I show you, we have uh, uh, where is it? We have these uh, three texture images. Okay, the iron image and uh, the uh, the wood texture image. So you will find uh, this image uh, in the in the project folder. Okay, I already provided. Uh, or you can uh, just uh, Google it on you know your browser and uh, look for other texture image that you are interested in. Okay, so we'll move on to Unity. Um, Excuse me, Photoshop. Okay, so uh, I'll close this one. This is the previous one I've done. Close it, and then I will bring our UV map in here. So here I'll name it UV. Okay, so that is the UV of our model. So first thing I will do, create a new layer and place this new layer below our UV layer. Okay, and on this new layer, I will fill it with a white color so we can see our stroke, uh, the outline clear, clearly. And then we can uh, rename this, uh, this layer as a UV. Okay, and here's the BG, which is background. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll select the UV layer and use the uh, W key, which is the this one, what is called Magic Wand Tool. You know. um, short key is the W. Okay, and with that, you can just uh, click on an empty space here, so you just like this whole area outside of uh, outside of the UV, and then we'll go to Tool Menu, Select and Modify, and Contract, and I'll contract it by 15 pixels. As you contract, as you can see, you know we'll contract our selection. So now we have a gap between our selected area and the UV included area. All right. So I'll create a new layer, and this time I'll select a gray color, okay, and click on OK, and use uh, the fill color fill, which is a GK shortcut, this one, and then 
fill the grid corner here okay and I'll name it as mask okay and hit command D to deselect or you can just go to top menu select and click on here to deselect okay so that will mask out you know anything that we don't want it to appear so if we bring texture map in here down below it will not show up you know on here you'll only be showing inside of this area all right so we all uh, select these two uh, layers and hit command G command G or if you are on Windows control G to group okay otherwise you can also you know go here create a new folder and drag it in drag it in here is it and I would like to lock this whole group so here I'll name it as a um, ref reference okay select it and lock it so we'll not change anything inside here and select this background and lock it and then I'll go to here um, the texture images so I'll bring in let's say well start to work on the wood so I'll bring in the wood and hit return key or enter key to confirm it and then uh, VK for move and we'll move it down and it will be used for the wooden barrel as you can see the texture image is smaller than the UV so I'll uh, command T okay to scale it up command T as a size or you can just go to beneath it add it and free transform here short key is command T or control T okay bring it up um, so this is one piece okay it's okay if you cross it uh, one side and another side all right and then I'll merge them together so I'll select this one hit command E to merge them oops since I haven't rasterized them so I'll select both of them right click uh, you know rasterize layer and then you know you can right click and merge layer or you can just you know select one and hit command E to merge them so this will be the wood as you can see it across it to the metal which I don't want and I'll just manually uh, what is the short key short key is a uh, L beneath yes L uh, for a nas uh, laser tool and then we'll select this area and hit denate uh, denate okay so this only cover the wood area and for this area we'll do the same thing so uh, here I'll just um, select this one and hold down the option key which is alt key and then just a drag and you'll make a duplication so cover this part okay and then use the L which is a laser tool and then we'll just manually select this area and you know this denate this area and in this whole area okay and we can select this near and hit command E to merge it so this is a wood and we'll hide it and this will be the metal so now let's start to work on the metal so um, where is he here so I'll bring in the first image iron one so drop it in and confirm hit uh, return key or enter key to confirm and then make sure it cover this whole area and right click and rasterize okay and then we'll select the area that we don't want and hit denate key to denate and this area and hold on shift to add more areas and this area and hit denate here we go all right uh, so now it only covers this area. So this is iron and this is the wood. Um, I still cannot feel that the texture is a little bit simple and I want this um, you know, barrel looks really kind of old, um, very um, you know, old texture. So what I'll do is I will, okay. So I'll drop in this texture, which is iron two drop it in here so it's big it covered the whole area and as you can see how it looks so I'll right click on it and rasterize and then I'll play with the blending mode different uh, blending mode and find the one I like the best 
I think this two is very interesting. Okay, maybe overlay. I like overlay, you know. See, this is before, this is after. You know, add this old texture, this dirty thing onto it. Um, and I can lower down the opacity, maybe about 70. You know, should looks good. Not very intense. Um, and since, you know, I still want to keep these two parts, the iron and the wood separate. So what I can do is I can just make a duplication of it. Okay, and for this one, I can hold down Command key and and click on the icon of the iron layer. Click on that, so it will select all of the area that I filled on the iron layer, and then select back on the um, on this uh, texture layer, and hold down Command Shift and I, which is an inverse selection. If you're on Windows, it should be Control Shift I. Okay, if you don't like a shortcut, you can just go to a select and uh, inverse. Here's the short key. All right, and denate. So as you can see, it'll denate the area that we included. Okay, so now this will be the iron. And this one, I would like it to use it for the wood. So same thing, hit Command D to deselect, or you can just go to select and deselect. Okay, and uh, hold down Control or Command if you're on Mac, and click on this icon, and then select uh, the iron image, the texture image. And hold down Command Shift I, and then denate. So now we only have this area that is for the wood, and I can name it wood uh, text. Okay, so that will be the texture. And now let's add a text. Uh, so here I'll use uh, the text tool, which is the short key is a T. Uh, here is it. So I'll grab an area. <coughs> and I'll say TNT, okay? And I use the font as an Arial Black. And I'll place it, uh, let's see, for this is the top, this is bottom. If I go to the model, and it's right here. Okay, it is the top and here's the bottom. And here's the front. No, where is the front? This time, actually. Okay, yeah, this side, as you can see, the Z axis, and this side is the front. So here's the front. Uh, so we can place the text over here. So TNT, uh, maybe I need to be too small, and I can increase it to 350, maybe. Okay, and I'll uh, change the text layer to white color. And I would like it to be centered. Okay, and then I would like uh, to play with this blending mode. Maybe first I will lower it down, the opacity down a little bit, and then play with the blending mode to see which one I like the best. I think the soft light works great. Okay, I like it. And then I also would like to duplicate, you know, this one. Actually, I'll just import a new one. So import iron 2 texture and I would like to you know cover it with this area and confirm the change and right click and rasterize the layer and hold down command key and click on this T this text icon so it will select the area with the text and then I can select the iron image and hold down command shift I to invert the selection to deselect the area that is outside of the text. Okay, and then I can play with the blending mode. And I think, let's see, okay, overlay, I like overlay. Overlay works. Okay, and uh, I can lower it down uh, just a little bit. Here is it. So we have the text on it and uh, um, yeah, I like the texture. So now um, we'll put this whole thing in a folder and I'll uh, rename it diffuse. I think it's a 2F. So diffuse map, which is means the texture map, the color map that we see. And then we'll create other type of maps. Okay, so here let's hide, uh, not the whole thing, hide this uh, UV line. So you don't want 
uh, this reference line to exist in your texture, right? So I'll hide it, and also I'll save this as a as a PSD file so I can trace back. So texture um, burial. Okay, and then I will hi uh, save this whole thing to a JPEG image. So hit Command Shift S, or if you're on Windows, uh, Control Shift S. Okay, save as, save as a JPEG and texture burial, and I'll play underscore here, and I'll hit D, which means a diffuse map. Okay, and confirm, and uh, here we go. Okay, so here's our texture. And since I'm going to use this texture um, for my model, and this is the final, this is the final for my diffuse map. So I'll mark it with a counter so I know this is texture. Okay, and then here I will use a program called Crazy Bump. Uh, it is free, so you can just search Crazy Bump and you can download it. It has both Mac and Windows version. Um, it's very good, very easy to use. When you open it, it should have this window, right? So you can open photography from file. So just click on that. And then you can load your texture image, which is this one. Okay, that uh, texture image we just uh, um, exported and then open. And then it says it is thinking and it will give you two options. Okay, because when you create a normal map or a bump map, um, it has two way. So either you know this area is uh, pushed in or you push it out. So there's a two way, right? So basically, uh, we'll use it to create a normal map or a bump map. The map will use the, uh, will be used to generate the detail, the bumps on the surface. Okay, so you can choose one of these, and if you think it is incorrect, and you can always just um, re-import and choose another option. Okay, so I'll choose this one, and then as you open it, it should pump up you know a preview for you and you can just you know just click on this sphere and rotate around and then you'll be able to see if um, you know the bump is accurate as you can see this is the wood burial and i have um you know these um textures i think is in uh is it is correct however as you can see it captured this text tnt right the text is just the paint and I don't want it to be on the bump. I don't want it to, you know, generate these bumps. Okay, so that means if we want to use this uh, texture image to generate a bump map or a normal map, I should hide uh, the text. Okay, so here I will just go back to Photoshop and hide these uh, texture layers and save a image again. So this one I'll just save it as just for bump or you know crazy bump okay and I'll just just use it as a reference and later on I'll delete it so save all right and then go back to the crazy bump and here I'll go back here and at the bottom you should see open you know click on open and then uh, you'll be able to uh, re-import your texture image so here I'll uh, use this one which is you know I remove the text and open and then you go um, reanalyze it and then this time you should be good all right so I'll use this one and this is normal map see it looks really good the normal map it has the, all these textures and it will generate the bumps and this is how it looks as you can see now we don't have the TNT captured right okay so for intensity by default is a 15 uh, 50 uh, however based on my experience is too intense you know uh, so I would use about 25 oops 25 oops. just manually change it 25 or 27 or 20 um, you know one of these are good um, so nor down in the intensity as you can see the contrast is nor right and then on the bottom you should see save so just click on save and you should see save normals to file so just click on that and then you should be able to save it to your texture folder uh, here I'll save as texture burial underscore um, I'll see 
and as normal map. Okay, and save. And then if I go back to my folder, see here is it, the normal map. Okay, looks great. Um, so here I will also mark it in red color since this one will be the final. I'll use it. All right, and then. Uh, on the bottom, you have different tabs. Uh, here, you should see is uh, specularity, right? So click on specularity. So what specularity map does is, uh, it will generate a reflection map, uh, the reflection on your model. So any area that marking white color, it will reflect lights, the one hundred percent of the light. If it green, it will reflect, for example, fifty percent. If it dark green, it will be twenty percent or ten percent lights. And if it is a uh, black it'll uh, not reflect any light. So that's the concept of it. Um, and, and then we can just click on save again and save specular to file. Uh, and texture barrio underscore here we'll see uh, S as a specular and save. However, one issue is, as you can see, for specularity, um, here this part is the iron, right? For iron, um, metal, it will reflect light. And since this is a rusted um, metal, so some area uh, it will not reflect light, but some area it will reflect light. So that's why we have these uh, white and gray spots. However, for the wood texture, the wood doesn't reflect any light. Okay, so we want this uh, part to be entirely black, but we cannot do it here. So we just have to do it in Photoshop. All right, so now we'll move on. Um, so this one, it will not be the final image. As I said, we have to change this part to be internally black color. So I'll change this to not to be final. All right. And then I'll go back to Photoshop. And um, here I can change it back, the matters. So um, I will drop in this um, spec narrative map. Okay, bring it here. And then I'll create a new layer. And then I'll uh, select this whole area. Okay, this whole area. And um, use a black color, you know, and uh, GK as a fill, and we'll fill this whole area as black. As you can see, before I fill this metal, it has a, uh, some um, white color on the bottom. That is because you know, when I export the map, see here, I accidentally denated the texture on this side. So that's why I captured that part. So, okay. So this should be good. So I'll put this in one folder and name it as a specularity map. And again, as I said, here it has a white area and I have to fix it. So let me see if I turn on the UV. Oh, okay. So the UV um, doesn't include this area. It is outside of the border, so it is fine. If there is a white area, it's fine. So I, I will not worry about it. All right, so with the specular map here, um, I can just uh, copy this word and uh, I can save it. Save it as a JPEG and texture barrier underscore specularity. Oops, actually, S is enough. I understand. So save it. And uh, here will be our specularity map, and I'll mark it in a uh, yellow color. Okay, and I'm done with the uh, with this one, and also with this one. I can denate it since that's not for our final uh, texture. And again, as I said, remember when we create um, the project folder for our uh, model, we have those uh, subfolders, right? One folder is the source image folder. Uh, here is it. So this is our project folder. So we have a source image folder. So you have to place all of your texture images inside of this folder, your um, texture image. Okay, so these are these three. Okay, so we have select all of them, command C, copy, and then go to this folder, command V to paste. So when you are looking for your textures, it will be very easy to find them. Okay, and then uh, here, We'll go back to Maya and we'll create a new material. So we have to talk about number material in the first few lessons, right? So for number material, it doesn't create any reflection. 
So here we'll use uh, foam material or bling material. So urinary people use a bling material for um, iron, for metal, since it will have a reflection. And people will use a foam material for glass. Uh, it also has a very high reflection material, you know. Um, so here we'll use a bling, and we'll rename it as a, a burial. Okay, so we'll use this whole uh, this one material for this whole thing. Right, the bling material, the metal, uh, uh, the bling material we have created, it has high reflection. But remember, we have this um, uh, spectral narrative map. So the spectral narrative map, you can understand it like a mask. So it'll mask out the reflection on this area, and for this area, it'll mask part part of the reflection. Okay, so that's the beauty of a reflection map, spectral narrative map. All right, so here. Uh, in the hypersheet, uh, if you don't know how to get here, you can just go to the top menu, Windows, um, Rendering Editors, and Hypersheet. Okay, so um, for the counter channel, click on this checker box, and we'll apply a 2D texture, a file texture. So we'll import a file as a texture. So here for image name, click on this folder, and we'll note D, Diffuse Map, as a counter channel. Okay, and then make sure to select the whole thing in object mode. Okay, in object mode, and uh, right click on this material and assign material to selection. And then we can hit six key to display the texture. Now you can see that the whole thing has reflection, which is incorrect, right? Uh, the texture, the color map, it looks good. I just don't want the uh, reflection, and also it don't have any bumps. Um, so file, let me just do it very quick, and bound value, and uh, normal, here we go. Now you can see that it update the bumps immediately, as you can see, you can see the lighting, the shadow, okay, however, it's not reflection. So we'll select this material again, um, the window is super small. So if you go to the property editor here, down below, back in our shading, for a spec on a color here. Um, click on this checker box and use a 2D texture, the file, and uh, image name, click on that and find the specular map. Open. Here I will also create a light and I will create a point light. And I'll enable the light mode. And uh, here's the light I created. I'll just move it out. And then if I get close to my model, as you can see, if I place the light at different location, you can see the bumps on the barrel. And if I move it up, and you can see the reflection on the metal part. And this is corresponding to the light direction. All right. So that is the whole procedure of how to model um, this barrel and how to um, create a different type of material and texture map for the barrel.